Well, good morning. It has been such a joy for me to share with you God Encounters. Monday was the stillness of the night. Tuesday was round that food table. Monday, walking on that road when God encountered us. Thursday was by the fire. And Friday was, she wasn't listening, by the water. <laughs> So, but today I've got Helen Azer, who I know you all love and has done so much different teaching for you. And I thought, let's pick Helen's brains mm -hmm. about God encounters and let's have a little explore. So, Helen, I want to ask you, do you have any memories of real God encounters? Are there things that you think about when you even have that term, God encounters? Yeah, I think for me, rightly or wrongly, an encounter always feels like a very special out of the ordinary thing. And I've been intrigued this week that you've actually looked at some of the ordinary encounters like on the road. And I thought, am I right to think an encounter has to be extraordinary? But an encounter is also something I believe that has always left me marked, that I know that I know I've met with God and I'm never the same after it. And one that I can think of is when I was in my very early days starting out in ministry and had been through a, a bit of a rough period of just finding, I was finding some of the wider issues in church difficult, some of the church politics, and I was a bit disillusioned, disappointed halfway through just thinking what is this about surely it's all about the good things I was learning about at theological college and then you know you hit the real pastoral issues the real human issues and you think oh wow what am I doing and I felt exhausted to be very honest and there were a few things that had happened sort of left field as well that left me feeling a bit bruised and I, I prepared for a God encounter and I thought you know what I just need to meet you God I'm getting a bit disillusioned I'm getting a bit actually offended with church and I just need to encounter the God who first called me and I went away um, and sometimes for me actually disconnecting from the everyday and spending that intimate time with God is the thing where I just feel refreshed again feel alive again get perspective and I went away to a conference and I remember in the time of worship God actually even though I prepared for it in the sense of God I really need you I'm desperate God surprised me and it was like the, the preparation and the surprise all at once and I remember there was a one particular song and it was um, I think it's Todd Agnew Grace Like Rain and I just felt in fact even saying it now I can feel it again it's like I just felt the grace of God beginning to wash over me and it was like rain after the heat of an intense battle and it was so refreshing it it deeply deeply ministered to me and I remember that which I'd been holding together and trying to be professional and trying to be real and whatever I suddenly just crumbled and the whole thing just came spilling out and I just cried and wept and prayed like I hadn't done for a long time mm -hmm. and it was that grace like rain encounter and that for me just stands out as one of those wow moments I, I can feel it now it's like yeah, I can feel it as you're talking. So would you, how would you say to people, because yes, you're right, I've played a little bit <laughs> devil's advocate yeah. this week and done a lot more of the normal, like sitting yes. around a table. I love that. So um, we need to take those times away. But what if we can't at this yeah. time? How can we prepare in our everyday mm -hmm. to be God aware? Mm -hmm. I think it's being aware of him in the in the, the very ordinary things like the fact that we sit at a meal table or we, we have something to eat. And I find that gratitude for little things makes me more God aware that some of the things I might take for granted. But I think also being God aware, you know, like I've trained myself to wake up in the morning and speak to God first thing. So I say, good morning, God. Thank you for for this day. And just actively engaging rather than assuming I'm aware so almost proactively like you would with another person in the room and sometimes we can always slip into the fact you know God is other God is spirit so we don't speak to him in the same way but I find that actually talking to him very real as if he you know as if it was you I say morning Rachel mm. hi yeah. you know I've come into the room and mm. I do that with God and I find that helps me but I think even in our everyday, if we can't physically get away for 24 hours away or whatever, actually taking your five minutes or your half an hour or whatever you can stretch to and disconnecting 
from my phone that's constant messages coming through, actually putting aside time and giving God priority, I find helps me. Don't always manage it, but I think that helps. Mm. What about yeah. you? Well, I, 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 was, I also think that you have to be, um, prepare yourself for the sneak attacks yes. and the surprise. <laughs> and that in almost random conversations, if you've got an ear to hear, yeah. you can have a God encounter. Mm, that's true. Um, sometimes even an advertising board yes. or something. There can just be a phrase, a slogan, something you hear that so resonates yes. in you that you think, oh, wow. And you feel that. It's like what I said on the road to Emmaus. Yeah. Their hearts were strangely warmed. And I think we need to be much more alert mm. to that strange warming yes. of, oh, wow, that was God. Yes. You had a word for me right then. I wasn't expecting it at all. I was in my everyday. But we need to take those moments. Yeah. I remember Chuck Pierce early on in my prophetic time. He said, Rachel... Don't be casual mm. with divine connections mm. and divine instructions. Amen. And I think in our everyday, yeah. we can have a God encounter, mm. just a phrase. In fact, what I taught on, I think it was Thursday about yeah. the fire, of Peter standing next yes. to the fire, not being marked by fire. That was a God thing. Mm. Just spoke it to me. He said, Rachel, I'm looking for those who will be marked by yes. the fire, not just stand around the fire. Yeah. And... That encountered me. Yeah. And I think we need to let mm. it resonate. Mm. So maybe that's <laughs> for us as people. But I want to take you big picture. Yeah. Talk to me just quickly. Give me some headlines of some of the incredible God encounters to communities or nations over history even that have attracted your attention. Oh, the historical one that always comes up for me just because that period marked me so much was in the Reformation period, 15th century, 16th century, Martin Luther's tower encounter. And he was sitting grappling with God, offended by God, not knowing how he could connect, feeling overwhelmed by the weight of sin. And then he read Romans 1 verse 17 and it says about the righteousness of God. And his instant reaction was from his place of offence of, oh, here's another high standard I can't meet. And then God encountered him and he began to speak to him about, no, Martin, you've got it wrong. I'm not a God who wants to hold a bar up so high you can never reach it and ask you to jump. I'm a God who gifts you with my righteousness so that you're made whole. And it was that encounter that meant that we today have a Protestant church, that we today understand we're saved by grace and not by the hard work that birthed a revolution across the whole of Europe. One encounter that sparked the transformation of nations. And literally from that point on, yes. then, it, everything changed. That for me is one of those yeah. seminal moments and quite often if you look at history there's quite a ricochet isn't there absolutely so count zinzendorf you know with the moravian revival then actually that triggered john wesley Wesley's one, yeah. and then the revival that we saw here and then john wesley triggered um then there was the, well, the social reform social was reforms the time. Yeah. of the time and then there was Charlotte also was the... then there was evan roberts with yep. the welsh revival yep. which triggered the zoo street, street yeah. and those revivals so often our god encounters of a personal yep. thing like luther or john wesley actually then has a national yep. which then can have a global, global impact and I think especially in today's experience, I mean, you know, we go global immediately, don't we? And actually, mm. can a nation be changed in a day? Well, why not? You know, mm. one encounter could literally, I mean, we've seen the flip side of those things where negative encounters yeah. ricochet across the world. Why not the kingdom encounters with God? Yeah. So looking at our world, and I mean, not just West, yeah. looking at our world, where would you see we need God encounters? Why? And what, how do you think we should be stewarding them? Wow. You know, sometimes I think we need uh, those encounters again with the awe and the majesty and the reverence of God. Those encounters that mark God out as other, a bit like those Elijah moments. And mm. I think there are parts of the world where there's such an awareness of a God, but actually those aha moments of God... God is like, I think you started this week with the supreme God who holds all things together. And I think, you know, we see the mess in, for example, the Middle East, the poor people of Lebanon, what they're going through, yeah. the struggles and the hardship. And imagine just the encounter 
that would transform them. We often think on the human level and rightly, what can we do to help, to bring aid, to bring assistance? But I've been so provoked. It's like we're saying one encounter can change nations. Well, come on, let's pray. For come it. on, come on. So, Father, we just want Jesus. to right now pray yeah. for Lebanon. Come on. God, we hear the cry yes. and the groaning. Yes. We can see them on the streets. That dear woman oh, that just Father. cried out to President Macron yeah. and just said, do something. something. So God, yeah, we Father. ask you, God of heaven and earth, yeah. God literally on their flag of yeah. that cedar yeah, of Lebanon, which is such a yes. picture all through of your faithfulness yes. and your provision. God, we ask you for the Lebanese people at this time. Yeah. Will you encounter them? Amen. Will you start that spark yes. that just changes Lebanon, yeah. Beirut at this Ignite time? Just as that ammonium yeah. nitrate ignited, yes, right. became a flashpoint yeah. of negativity. Yeah. Now, God, light a flashpoint Turn that does around. something completely yes, different. Lord. God, we want right to lift now. up our hands and cry Lord, out for dear Lebanon yes. at this time Father. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> what about another part? Pick another nation. Well, how about our nation of, of Britain at this time and, and the Europe? I mean, we sometimes just think, oh, well, the, you know, the East. But, you know, what are, what are the things I, I think sometimes those um, head banging encounters? I mean, we're, we're so proud of our ability to suss everything out in our minds, the, you know, the, the, the agendas of the day, the humanistic agendas. And I just sometimes think, come on, God, let's have a sneak attack that actually mystifies people, we'll pray things they can't. Father, we declare and decree today in Jesus' name over our Western nations, those sneak attack encounters with God that will mystify even the brightest brains. Father, the breakthroughs of the miraculous that cannot be explained only through science, but that get scientists engaged in new spheres. Father, would you break open our whole containments of what we've thought is yes. possible. Lord, you are the God of the impossible you are indescribable uncontainable and we ask you to break through our reserves and our containments mm. and be the god for us in jesus name and come on we want to pray for america come on i have so many american friends yes. and obviously an american mother american <laughs> yeah. brother that's right and um you know i've talked to many of them and they're feeling very I don't even know what the word was would be, but cautious, a bit overwhelmed, yeah. unsettled. Yeah, unsettled yeah. They feel everything shaking, yeah. not sure what's there. Obviously, they've got the election coming, mm -hmm. and they're just not sure mm -hmm. where God is in the midst yeah. of it all. Obviously, the virus is difficult, but let's just pray for America. Mm. Come on. Father, we pray oh, right now gosh. for this incredible nation yes. of the United States of America. And we ask for the God encounters. We ask in this election yeah. and in the political scene of America, which seems to be shaking and conflicted in so yeah. many levels. Oh God, Father. will you encounter yes, America? Lord. Will you be gracious to yes, America? Lord. Father, we also yes. want to talk to the cities. Yeah. We, we just pray, Lord, yes. so many cities, this coronavirus, yeah. five million people, death rate just climbing and climbing mm -hmm. and father we pray now yes, that you'd reverse every yes. curse god we want to cry yeah, out for america yeah, we pray sure. that there would be god encounters at yeah. this time yeah. we pray even with all the racial tensions yes. with all the demonstrations with all the unrest yeah, with all that's people. going on encounter Manantic people yes. we, we we know you've raised up a man yes. you've raised up a woman yes. in times past and something's happened in America. Mm. Do it again, we pray yes, Lord. in Jesus' name. And let that grace like rain fall on yes. city after city, home after home after home. Let there be such a revolutionary transformation of lives in this season, Father. Grace like rain. And we finally you, pray Father. for Australia and yes, Southeast Asia. Yes. And we speak to you really where you've been locked again. down and New Zealand just yes. discovered new... Um, um, cases of mm -hmm. the virus and all that's going there we just speak yes, to Lord. southeast asia mm -hmm. australia new zealand mm -hmm. and we say peace to peace. you may the god of all grace yes. encounter you yes and father we pray in us that you will indeed mm. stir in us mm. 
a desire to encounter yes, you. Lord. And Lord, even as we've talked Amen. and prayed, we know that there are no God encounters unless we cry out and make ourselves available. So I pray for every home, every family yes, today, Lord. meet them. Meet them. Mm. And we thank you for it. Jesus. Well, we hope you can join us tomorrow. Gordon and myself will be looking at what do we see on the horizon? Mm. And how can we steward encounters? Maybe you've heard part of our passion as we pray. Yeah. Well, if you want to continue this journey, join us tomorrow. And God really bless you. Bless you.